Oh, Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Terry. We have the University of Acadia call tonight with Franco Collins from Australia. We've got some great things to cover tonight. Uh, you all are going to be excited. And uh, so, again, this is another uh, seatbelt strapper. So, uh, just as a reminder, we are not giving out legal advice. We will help answer questions to the best of our knowledge, the best that we can. And uh, those of you that are on the phone lines, once we get to the question and answer session, if you press star eight, that will put you in the question uh, queue. And those of you on the chat, if you will type in question, all uppercase, and put a colon or semicolon and then change to proper case, typing in your question after that. We can spot your questions and we'll get to those as well. So there was a couple of questions we may have missed last week. So if any of you are on the call that uh, are on the chat and listening and you had a question left over from last week, it would be great. You can go ahead and type that in and we'll catch that early. And with that, Frank, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Terry. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming listening to the regular University of UK call. And thanks for those that can't listen live but will be downloading the call later on. There are a number of things I want to cover that, that Terry mentioned in the introduction tonight. I want to cover some of the updates that we've put in to the canons in the area of estate, in the area of signatures and signing as an executor, as well as sealing documents. I also want to go back on some of the material that we have gone through in the 12 presumptions as well as summonses. And the reason I want to go through that material, including the new material, is I'm very aware that we are in this middle period where I've explained this information, we've shared this information, but the actual examples and remedies are not yet on the site. So for a number of you that are facing still very serious issues, I want to be able to help as much as I can through the call in how this information may be put to practical use for you. Hey, so Frank. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Terry. I did uh, miss on our, uh, the uh, date for today. And if you yes. don't mind, I'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, rattle off the date here. We have today is uh, the... What are we on? Oh, the 10th day of the 8th month, 2011, over here in the States. And uh, that will be the 10th of August, 2011. Go ahead, Frank. Sorry for the interruption. Not at all, Terry. No, thank you. And I, I, I appreciate it. So I want to cover that first. I want to cover the latest information on a state because we've mentioned this. What does it mean to be the general executive of the estate? I want to talk about that because it's, it's information that has been raised by many others in the past. We've discussed it in the past. We can now speak more clearly about these things. And I want to share that with you. I also want to put this information in a, in a way that I hope will give some practical example for you in the matters that you're facing right now. I also want to cover some subjects that I was starting to speak to a fellow by the name of Michael Vara on an interview that was earlier in this week. Uh, and I don't normally do outside interviews at the moment, mainly because of time. I, I just physically find it very difficult with time. I'm, I'm trying to get as much of what we're doing done. And so when people have asked me to speak, I've said, look, I, I really don't. But I accepted the interview. But the interview stopped uh, dead in its tracks when we started to discuss the aspect of the US Constitution and what remedy there is when faced with public servants now who are openly engaged in treasonous acts. And of course, the conversation went dead. So I want to cover that, and hopefully the same thing won't happen again when we get to it. But I do want to cover, in particular, the, the fact that there is quite a bit of remedy built into these documents and how you might like to think about and how you and others might like to think about how you address these issues because it remains a burning issue in many places, not just America, but in Canada and Australia and England, in many parts of the world. So I want to cover that. The third is I want to give you an update in what's going on with the presentment 
plan to go to the Bank for International Settlement. I want to cover that because a number of you offered to assist and of course nothing has been done yet. But I want to explain what has come about in terms of thinking and planning and where we're at. So I think with those three areas we'll pretty much cover a bit over the hour and I hope if all of you are okay probably run a little bit longer than an hour tonight, probably about an hour and ten minutes in going through these things. But at the end of the day, as with all these calls, the information we provide is the honest research and understandings that we have. And in all cases, in everything we do, I hope that some of this, all of this information will help in some way for you or those that you know. Well, let's start then with the updates that have gone on in terms of the canons of positive law. When we want to understand what it is to be the executor or the general executor, the general guardian of the estate and how we might start to think now in how we address ourselves uh, into their system. So for this, I'd like you, if you can please, to call up a browser and go to OneHeaven, that's O-N-E-Heaven.org, and when you get there, if you can go and click on positive law, I'd like you to call up Article 99, which is a state. So just to let you know that again, it's to go to one-heaven.org. When you get there, click on positive law, canons of positive law, and then call up Article 99, a state, and we'll go through some of the key updates. Well, there have been a number of pioneers, and it would be remiss of me not to pay homage to them because they are, in fact, people who have provided enormous insight into parts of the system. It is, as you know, very difficult to get a handle on the nature of their system, the nature of the private bar guild, the nature of the Roman law, and the other layers of law, international law, and so on, that we are discussing and have been trying to understand. And part of that problem is that when you go and look at their dictionaries, whether it be Black's Law, whether it be Bouvier's, whether it be other forms, whether it be jurisprudence and other resources in their system, even between themselves and even between editions, they are constantly changing the meanings of things. They are constantly changing the relationships of things. They are constantly re rebuilding based on the pr premise that they are free to lie and lie till the cows come home. So when it comes to a state and when it comes to trust, this is an area that has taken quite some time to get our head around. And I wish to pay homage to a fellow by the name of David Clarence. And David, in the past and probably maybe even today, uh, is not necessarily the greatest fan of Franco Collins or even Eucadia. However, David should be regarded and honoured as one of the men that recognise that there is enormous power in the role of the executor and specifically when that role is associated with the estate. Now tonight I want to explain to you why that is the case. These are the elements that at the time David chose not to or was not able to at the time explain. But I want to get back to that and look at this. One of the frustrations when you're dealing with the bar and you're dealing with the law is this never-ending uh, approach where they view it as a game. Then on one hand, we claim a trust and then they seem to create a new trust. When on one hand, we claim a right and they seem to find another way to weasel around. So it is like a, a pea in a shell game with them many, off, many times when we're trying to understand what it means to be the executor of the things that really should be ourselves. It's my body, it's my mind, it's my soul, and no one, no one has a right to claim those. And yet we have discussed many times now that in their system, that's precisely what they've done. So when we talk about a state, what we're talking about is we are talking about a description of property within a trust that was brought into life under Henry VIII. And if we want to understand the relationship between the state and the trust, the way to view it is simply this. 
A trust will only ever have one trust corpus, one body. A trust will only ever have one overall estate attached to it. But within an estate, one may have many properties. One may have many personal possessions. One may have many relationships that constitute trusts. For example, your social security is formed through a trust. Your license is formed through a trust. Your birth certificate is formed through a trust. So an estate will, by definition, hold at least two trusts. One holding real estate, real property, the other holding personal property. So there will always be a minimum of two trusts within an estate. So a trust will have one corpus, will have one estate, but an estate may hold potentially unlimited trusts. And this is how to overcome the shell and pea game that we have been facing when we deal with the private bar. Now, what the private bar and what the courts and what the present system want us to do is they are quite happy if we keep our focus purely on the description using the word trust. Because if we continue to focus purely on the description of trust when we're dealing with their system, then they can create a trust in an instant. I'll give you an example. We know that they create a constructive trust every time that they create a court suit. But if they wanted to get creative, they could quite easily create a trust for every day that the court matter is, is on. So just by claiming you're the executor of the matter is not enough. And this is one of the realisations we've had in the last week as we continue to update this information. If you want to establish a position where they have absolutely no room to wiggle, then you are the general executor of the estate of the legal person. Now, if I use myself as an example, I am the occupant of the office of general executor of the Frank O'Collins estate. In other words, whether they've created a Cessna KV trust for my body, for my mind, for my soul, whether they've issued a thousand different trusts for all the government documentation, whether I've got a million properties or none, whether there are a thousand trusts or a hundred trusts is irrelevant. I am the occupant of the Office of General Executor of the Frank O'Collins estate. And any one of these people that I'm dealing with are public trustees, are public servants that report to me in every one of those trusts, no matter where they are, no matter whether they're created today or will be cremated tomorrow, as general executor, they fall under my rule. And that is one of the key realisations I hope that we come to now. So when we want to describe ourselves and we want to describe the way the system deals with us, and the legal person, you are as I am. You are, the gen, you are the occupant of the office of general executor of the legal person estate. And that is one of the key understandings. And I hope when you look through a state here, we can make that clear. Now, the next question is, signing and sealing, and the behaviour of the general executor. And there are a number of things that people have raised when it comes to the position of executor and general executor and whether one has to go to the extent of identifying yourself as a non-resident alien. These things are relevant. But I have to say to you, the most important thing, the most important thing, is when we choose to act, behave, and identify ourselves as the occupant of the office of general executor of the legal person estate for which we have a right. Now, before we move on, I was going to go to sign and seal, but before we move on, I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't explain why the office of general executor of the legal person